Hi, I'm Mishka, and welcome to my channel. So, this is actually um, my first video on this channel. If you've come from my main channel, which is a Star Stable Online channel, um, then hi. <laughs> if you haven't, then welcome to my second channel. I have a first channel. It will be in the description below if you want to go check it out. But anyway... Um, today we are going to be playing a visual novel game called Our Life Beginnings and Always. Um, this game is like, it has some stuff that still needs to come out, like DLC for example, but they just, but the developers of this game just released, um, like an epilogue of this game. So now that that has been released, I want to finally start this let's play of this, so... Yeah, before we get started, if you find this video entertaining in any way possible, then please hit that subscribe button and share this with your friends so then they can find out my amazing channel, just like you have right now. So, anyway, let's get into it. Oh yeah, and as a disclaimer, I have played this before, though it's been a while, so I am not going to be reading the tutorial or anything. If you want to, this game is actually free on Steam and on itch.io, so I believe Links in the description if you want to go check it out, but finally, I hope you enjoy, and let's get into it. New file, okay. <sighs> Alright, um, no, we do not want that to appear. Okay, so I already know what I want for my OC, aka me, but they don't have the name Mishka in this game, so I'm gonna have to go for a different M name, or maybe even possibly my real name. <laughs> So anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and do my OC so you guys can just enjoy the music while I do that. So yeah, see you guys when I'm done. Mira, Mina, Manette, Melody. Okay, everyone, so we are going to actually use the name Mina since it's similar to Mishka. But yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Okay everyone, we are done with my OC now, so let me introduce you guys to Mina Rose. So, I wanted to make her after my Star Stable character, but I wasn't sure if I wanted the beige or the yellow, um, though I prefer to call it blonde hair color, so I just went with blonde, since my character's hair is kind of like dirty blonde, but I don't really like the beige, so... Yeah, and I give her blue eyes, some scars, freckles, and rosy cheeks, so. Yeah, and her pronouns are she, slash her, or she. But anyway, that is my OC, so let's get right into the gameplay. Summer and sunset bird was a special time of year. You usually sleep until the ends of bustle. 
It was a popular tourist destination with people coming from all over to enjoy the beach, the weather, and the relaxation that came with both. The smell of the ocean, crisp and salty, hung in the air, bringing three whole months of school vacation with it. Ooh, that's exciting. Whew. I might get tired of talking real fast, sorry. During the summer, your moms didn't like you to wander too far outside your neighborhood, so you knew the area pretty well. That included the people. Families came and went from Sunset Bird, but they mostly stayed in what your mom called putting down roots. They built businesses, they got to know each other, and they definitely said hello to the nice young kids who waved when passing their stores. Going for a walk around town mostly meant that the familiar, friendly residents waved, or that's how your family was, or most often just said hello. Ooh, okay, it's a lot of text. I'm not sh okay. Again, I'm not sure, like, if I'm gonna read all of the choices. I might just go with whatever that I want to, so. Um. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, I feel like my character, like, for Star Stable is very friendly, so I'm just gonna say that we ended up saying hi to a lot of different people. Yeah. You enjoyed learning about all about where they were visiting from and hope to visit those places one day too. But today, there was a man sitting on the curb outside your house. Okay. He was sitting with his head in his hands, his whole body slumped over, and you wondered if he was even a real person or a statue that had magic sp magically sprung up from the ground overnight. Whoever, whatever he was, you had never seen him before. One thing about knowing everyone since that birth was that people who you didn't recognize really, really stood out. I'm sure. <laughs> it was rare for tourists to venture into the residential district as your moms called it. So for you, not knowing who a total stranger was set off a lot of red flags. I mean, please don't get kidnapped, please. Your moms had a talk with you and your big sister Lizzie about this kind of situation before. Oh, boots. Okay, sorry, that was my cat. Hold on, I'm gonna let him out real quick. Okay, sorry, I'm back. Sorry, again. Okay. Um, yeah. Continuing on? Okay. Oh, gosh. Okay, um, I feel like, <laughs> um, I'm just gonna go with the middle one. You weren't sure about this man yet. Okay, actually, yeah, I'm gonna read the choice. It's probably better if I do. <laughs> Still, you felt a bit scared knowing that he was blocking the way to your front door, but you were pretty interested. You wanted to know more about what was going on. Whether he was nice or not, you didn't want to be bothered. Um, it's kind of like the last one for me. You slowed down as you thought how about, about how you could get around this. There was a split second where your eyes met. That wasn't good. He was probably going to say something now that he'd seen you standing around here. Oh, hey, you were right. His deep voice called out to you, but you didn't say anything. Unfortunately, the man stood up and started to sneak his way toward you. <laughs> of course. Not wanting to seem too approachable, you fold your arm downstairs, still unsure about him but willing to be friendly. You offer the stranger a smile. Your whole body was frozen in place as he approached. Okay, we don't want to be rude, so let's just be friendly and offer him a smile. The man gives a grin of his own back. Okay, well, that's good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You're quite a snack. <laughs> Why am I like this? Okay. Do you live around here? What's your name? Um, hello. <laughs> you look the man up and down, taking him, taking in his tan skin and relaxed appearance. At least his clothes were relaxed. The way he was acting wasn't. He had sharks on his shorts and a stingray tattoo, and you wondered if he was obsessed with the ocean or something. While you made your assessment, he looked at you expectantly, waiting for an answer to his question. <sighs> I mean, go big or go home, right? <laughs> I live right there, my name is Mina. Great, nice to meet you, Mina. He gave you a broad smile, really settling on his face. Hello, give me that money. 
He reached into his pocket and pulled out a clean $20 bill. It crinkled in his hand as he held it up to you. Even more confused than before, you looked back at him. Well... Could you do me a favor? Nothing bad. Sorry I should have. Let me start over. <laughs> he cleared his throat and stood up straighter. From where you were standing, it just made him look creepier. Ew. Mm. I have a son. His name is Cove, who is about your age. You thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> You've never met anyone with that name. We moved in across the street, see? He gestured toward the house that had been empty for a year, his watch catching the late night afternoon, sunlight and reflecting off the walls. The gigantic for sale sign was finally gone. You must be mean on a rose, right? I met your moms earlier and they told me you were eight just like him, so... Ugh, sorry. He shook the $20 bill to bring it back to your attention, a hopeful smile tilting his lips at the corners. Can you try to be friends with the boy? Just give it a chance and you can keep this. He's a good kid, you'll like him. Do you mind? But you've gotta keep it a secret too, okay? You wouldn't be friendly to say his dad sent you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it won't be. Um, I feel sorry for Cove right now. <laughs> this definitely wasn't the normal way kids made friends. You knew that. What do you say? Want to make a deal? No, not really. You took the bill you don't like. <laughs> you ran away. Bye. <laughs> you spun around and made a break for it. No thanks, old man. <laughs> He turned on the spot and bolted down the street, ignoring his calls from behind you. Uh. Hey, come back. I'm sorry if I scared you. <laughs> I didn't know how else to ask. The soles of your shoes slapped against the concrete sidewalk as you ran, heat from the sun warm on your face. Jeez. Okay. Step one, first sight. Okay, this is probably where we meet Cove then. Like I said, I haven't played this in a while, so I don't remember much. Eventually, his shouting faded into the distance. You let yourself slow down and try to catch your breath, wiping the sweat from your forehead with the back of your hand. The chirping of crickets and tall, dry grass echoed around you, and you lifted your head to survey your surroundings. You'd run right into the hills behind your house's backyard. From here, you could probably get back inside without seeing the guy again. Whew, okay... There was a loose plank on the back fence, too small to fit through. We could try waving to Lizzie for help. Actually, I kind of want to see what our sister looks like. Though, I'm, I kind of remember her. Um, the fence was high. Um, no. Wait. No, you are not standing on the neighbor's fence. That's dangerous. You would be able to hide out here until then you go through the front door. Um, no. I feel like this that one... Okay, Lizzie, help. <laughs> you couldn't yell because the man might find you where you were. Or, I mean, the man might find out where you were. But your family would have to see you sooner or later. You took in a deep breath. You tried... Ugh, oh my gosh. You wanted to try and relax and couldn't. <clears throat> Sorry. You weren't sure what, but something told you that you weren't alone, so you glanced around. There was a boy sitting at the top of one hill. Oh my god, he looks so cute. Oh my god, I love the art in this game. There was a boy sitting at the top of one hill, almost completely hidden within the long grass and white flowers surrounding him. His head was buried in his knees, staring ahead by himself. For whatever reason, probably just that he was paying attention, he hadn't noticed you yet. You watched him a minute longer, feeling a bit like you found a deer in the wild. The deer didn't have... Ooh, okay. Um... What I noticed was his hair, so let's just do green hair. But this new boy did. You watched as it fluttered softly around his face in the breeze. After a few more seconds, you took a step forward, then another. And then he glanced your way. His aquamarine eyes reflecting the light in the moon, you stopped raising a hand to acknowledge him and show that you weren't scary. Hey, space cadet. With a start, he jumped to his feet, his hands bawling into fists at his sides. He didn't say anything, just stared at you in a strange way. Okay. He'd been crying. There were traces of tears on his cheeks and his knees, soaking the hem of his shorts, and his eyes were still shining with a few more. You'd obviously caught him off guard. He was your age, but he didn't look familiar. This is probably Cove. 
Maybe he was that boy that weird new neighbor had been talking about before you ran. The only way to actually know is to ask. Who are you? I've never seen you. He sniffled a little, rubbing his rooty cheeks before he answered. My name's Cove. Okay, yeah, so this is Cove. Fine. Aww, poor baby. <laughs> Aww. You can see him hesitate, shifting his eyes to the side and then back at you again. My dad and me, we moved here. Your guess was confirmed. So, is this your hill? He gestured with his uninjured arm to the passive grass surrounding you, his face falling at the prospect. I can leave if it is. Um, yeah, it is our hill. Bye then. No! <laughs> Don't leave! Wait, you can stay. I'm not kicking you out. But you said... I don't have to make people leave just because it's their, it's little, just because it's not theirs. Gosh, I cannot talk. Other people can visit. Sorry. <clears throat> I'm getting tired of talking a little bit. His face, oh, okay, geez. His face relaxed a little at that, and he toed the grass beneath his shoe, timidly. Oh. He sat back down with the thumb, resting his chin on his knees again. Curious about the strange new boy with the odd dad, he sat on the patch of grass next to him. The pure white flowers that covered this hill rocked back and forth gently as the stars twinkled above. The way they dotted the sky made them seem like flowers too. The night wind was cool as it traveled over the sun. I mean, not the sun. <laughs> the ocean and up the hill, chasing away the heat from the afternoon sun. Okay, um, why'd your family move? A quiet hiccup escaped Cove as soon as you asked the question. Almost like they never stopped, his tears started up again with a vengeance. My parents, they don't want to live together with me anymore. Aww. The tears fell fast and heavy over his flushed cheeks, sticking in his dark lashes. My mom made my dad leave, and he took me with him, and now we have a house here, and I want to go home. The outburst took you off guard. By the time he was done wailing, Cove's chest was heaving with exhaustion. He snuffled and removed his glasses, wiping at his eyes with the back of his hand before he put them back on again. I hate this place. I want my real life back. Oh, that's so sad. I want my mom. That's so sad. I'm so sorry, Cove. He slipped his hands underneath his glasses and pressed his fingers against his eyelids. Cove wound himself again. Oh my god. Up again for another long, crying fit. You felt bad for him, being forced to come here with no choice. You couldn't imagine what it would have felt like to live with only one of your moms, but it must be pretty hard. But from way off in the distance, you heard your parents. Mina! Cove? Cove. Kids, where did you go? Cove looked at you, tears still clinging to his cheeks. Don't tell them we're here. I don't want to go home. I don't want to go back to the house. I want to go home. Aww. It will be okay, Cove. It's okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> you were struck by a sudden need to, to reassure Cove. It it's not gonna be all fun, but isn't he your family too? Yeah, I guess. Then you can count on him when you really, really need him. You shot him a grin and pushed yourself to your feet. Slowly, Cove stood up with you, still looking a little reluctant. His dad's voice rang out again. Cove, can you hear me? He looked toward the sound of his dad's voice, silent, and turned away while rubbing his not bandaged arm. Sorry. I still don't want to go. Why? I'm going home, bye. Wanting to go home, you raised your own voice. <laughs> Over here. Ko's face soured. He said nothing, but his thought Ugh. Oh my god. But his thoughts were probably pretty nasty at that moment. I don't care. <laughs> Say all you want. I'm ready to go home. The trio of parents appeared over the curve of the hill. Instantly, all their eyes landed on you and they rushed over. Both of your moms were at your side in a split second, faces filled with worry. Mina, you're here after all. We had been at the park to check for Cove, then heard what happened earlier when you met the new neighbor. I thought you might have gone off further away. We're okay, don't worry. <sighs> Thank God you're both fine. <sighs> Were you two having fun out here? No. <laughs> he looked over at Cove, who was wiggling against his dad's tight hug and pushing at his arms. Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> He's good. I think I'm gonna marry him. Yunata's smiling slightly. Oh, that's wonderful. Finally letting go of his squirming, scowling son, Cove's dad turns to the three of you. That's a relief. Thanks very much for finding him. I really don't know this neighborhood. Good thing Mina knows this whole area so well. Absolutely. You should be getting home now. It's been a long day for us all. Say goodbye, Cove. Bye. Bye-bye. The two of them walked off into the darkness, heading toward the neighborhood. You watched Cove's bright pink cast until it disappeared. Hmm. Tell you what, we'll have a proper play date tomorrow, okay? Your new friend's dad wanted him to bring... Ooh, sorry. I'm like going ahead and reading words. Wanted to bring him by to see you and Lizzie. How does that sound? Um, sounds like words. <laughs> Whether your mom's laugh, the sounds are overlapping into a warm, familiar chorus. Mommy put her arm around your shoulder and led you towards the path. Satisfied and more than a little ready to go to bed after your long, exciting day, you followed them home. Okay, so this is, um, our feelings for Cove. This is how you feel towards Cove for this step. It can change in later steps, okay. So, I feel like for her, um, I feel like my OC in Star Stable and this game, um, is like, I don't know. Whenever they see someone, they fall hard, and so I'm just gonna pick crush immediately and like do relax since it's emotionative. So, uh, yes. Okay, go here. Okay. The next morning, you finished your breakfast so fast that you practically inhaled it. That's not good. Your sister Lizzie had to run out earlier to go play, but you stayed put. Today, just like your mom had promised, Cove was coming over to hang out. Excited to see your new friend again, Mina? Yeah, a lot. If you were going to get married, it made sense to be around each other. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Was not expecting that. Oh my god. How sweet. Isn't that just the sweetest thing? <laughs> I bet the two of them are going to be great playmates. Mm. Okay. With that said, are you done with your breakfast? Yeah. Oh, hold on, I'll be right back, everyone. Okay, everyone, I am back. Sorry for the wait. Okay. <clears throat> With all the expiration and eight-year-old Kim Muster, you looked at your empty cereal bowl, then at mom. Okay. Okay, as you can, we see. Good job, he should be here soon. Cleanup began, and then on cue, there was a knock. It was hesitant, like the person wasn't sure they were in the right place. Still loud, though. We need to get a more obvious doorbell. I know, I know. Mina, could you get it? Of course, you practically left out of your chair on the way to the door. Hey Rose family, thanks for having us. Mr. Holden, as your moms have called him and his son were here. Cove looked different in the bright lighting of your living room and when he wasn't crying. With his dad standing in front of him and mom and mommy behind him, you and Cove looked at each other. Pleased to see the new interesting boy. Jeez, the interesting new boy again, you smiled at Cove. Cove returned it shyly, aww. So cute. Okay. Oh, what's this? Oh my gosh. Babes, <laughs> how are you in here another time? Okay. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. Ugh. Okay. Threaded crystal bead, flower bead. Okay, we're gonna do the crystal bead bracelet. Let's go play in my room. Okay. okay. Take care. <laughs> Let us know if you need anything, you two. Have fun, kids. See you, See you later, son. Play nice. You led him to your room, puffing out your chest a little bit at the side of your treasures. There were lots of stuffed animals, a cool bed, and one to look out. It was a great room. You hadn't showed it to anyone in a while. Be really proud of it. Whew, I'm out of breath. Whew. Whew. He leaned in a little closer to one of your drawings on the wall. I like this. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Aw, so nice. You smiled at him. You were proud of that particular piece of art, and you got you were glad he noticed it. 
He turned on. He turned to look around the room a little more, studying the books on your desk and the pictures on the walls. You were glad for the company. It was nice to have someone new to play with. Then his eyes landed on the tiny box of beach things you collected tucked away by your door. He took a step towards it before hesitating and pointing at it as dead. What's that? A hoarder stuff I found on the beach. Oh. Do you have any driftwood in there? Dragging the box into the middle of the room, you and Co flopped down next to it. I think so. Yeah, see? You gestured to a piece at the bottom still covered with specks of sand. Neat. Neat. This is a good collection. Thank you. You got the sense from the tone of his voice that he wasn't just saying it to be nice or be like, um, Shilu, Shilu, Shilu. I'm just going to go Shilu. He actually meant it. Oh, right. I almost forgot Shilu is going to be here today. Shilu? Lazy's friend or like her number one fan, I guess. Mm. Do I have to see him? It should be okay. I mean, he's Lizzie's friend, not mine, but you know. That's kind of sad. <laughs> Come on, check out my shell some more. I found this one under a big piece of seaweed that had washed ashore in. You pulled out seashell after seashell, explaining where you got in each one and holding them up against the light. There were big ones, small ones, pink, purple, and orange. Most of them you had washed off in the bathroom sink when you brought them home, cleaning off the sand. Mm. Stories or scientific names? I do not know. Stories. <laughs> That's more funny. Apparently fascinated either by the stories or by the shells themselves, Ko listened with what looked like the full force of his attention. Like when you almost got pinched by a hermit crab while searching for shells and after watching him scuttle back into the ocean, he found another empty shell that was almost a twin to his home. It was a new experience to be the center of such dedicated focus. For some reason, it was making your cheeks feel warm. You had never felt like this around someone before. It was kind of weird. Cause girl, you got crushed on him. Kids, come down to the living room. You could tell the idea was making him unhappy, but mommy wasn't giving you much of a chance to hang around. Cove hadn't been like this meeting you. You guessed it was because you found each other by accident and a parent didn't make it happen. Mr. Holden must be right that telling Ko his dad was a part of that would be a bad idea. Well, we didn't even make a deal. We ran away. So, like, what? Is, like, what's the issue? Before you knew, you've been... Oh, jeez. I'm getting tired of talking. I'm sorry. You'd both been escorted downstairs and deposited into the living room, ready for Shy Lu's visit. The two of you sat side by side on the floor of your home's entryway. I brought the box of shells. I want to keep looking at them. Great. Bust it open. We can keep looking at it while we wait for Shiloh. Cove reached in and pulled out a big orange shell. Oh. Like he hadn't spoken aloud yet, he turned to you and held it up, his eyes shining. I think this one is the best of them. I like a different one best. I can show it to you. You reached into the box to take out the one you preferred. Cove looked on with interest. The two of you were still sitting on the floor looking through a collection of beach findings when the doorbell finally rang. Cove jumped startled by the sound. Since the person hadn't knocked you probably- oh jeez. You figured it was probably Shilu. He knew where to look for that. Lizzie's friend? Lizzie's friend, sorry. You nodded that it didn't seem to make Cove feel better. It was already obvious that Cove didn't hide his feelings well. You could tell what he was thinking right away. It was, this isn't a good idea. You'll be alright, he's here, we can't tell him to leave. He's at our only door, if you go upstairs, he'll find you. Okay, sorry, I had to yell something. Cove glanced around the room, his eyes wide, and finally paused with its gaze locked onto the back of the house. I can go out the window. He was already walking towards it. Scrambling to think of something to say, you step forward, then pause. <sighs> okay, geez, so, okay, so we have six options. I'm guessing these three bottom ones are like us going with him. And then these three top ones are us like persuading him to say. Um, good idea. Let's go. Because I don't want to meet him. <laughs> Hurry. They'll see where we're going. He glanced back at you and nodded. And nodded. Sorry. <laughs> Jeez. Ow. The two of you made your way to the window together. 
It wasn't much of a distance to climb her out, but the, but by the time you landed gently in the bushes, we looked up to see that Cove was already taking off away from the house. He was fast, but you knew you could outrun him if he had to. Cove, you ran as fast as your legs would take you, grass whipping around your ankles as you did so. Cautiously, Cove slowed to a halt and looked back at you. Where are you going? I don't know, somewhere else. I just don't want to see. Mina, oh gosh. You looked back and saw Shilu hoving down the hill after you, the backpack he clutched bouncing, bouncing around all the way. Along the way, oh my gosh. <laughs> what are you doing? Can I come? He must have seen you living out the window and followed behind. Hi. Oh, hi. Are you Cove? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Okay, I really need to wait for, like, their voices. <laughs> I'm Shiloh. Yeah, obviously. Okay. <laughs> Yep, are we going back or are we going to play outside? Shiloh's eyes moved between you and Cove. The smile remained sm strong on his face. It got a tiny frown from Cove in response. You were grateful that he hadn't asked why you had been running away. Inside, we left the box on the floor. Right, my shells and stuff. We have to make sure they're okay. Okay. Aw. Shiloh is actually kind of cute. <laughs> With Shiloh trailing behind you and Cove headed back toward the house. The plan for the afternoon, at least as far as you were concerned, was to sit and look at the beach thing some more. You weren't really in the mood to do much of anything else, especially if Code was having fun. Hey, check out this skull shell I found. Cool, right? It's a pretty color, kind of like my cast. Oh yeah, is it pink? <laughs> the beautiful glittering, glittering pink did look a little bit like the wrap around his arm. Pink is a nice color. Okay. Oh. Is it your favorite? Not really. What is? Maybe green or blue. It might be yellow. This is awkward. Oh, those are all cool. I guess. <gasps> Not sure how to deal with these slightly more awkward mm -hmm. signs. You look back at your shells. Mm. Like usual, it didn't take long for Shilu to get fidgety. Lizzie was his favorite. Without her around, Shilu didn't seem to know what to do with himself. And Cove wasn't like your sister. He wasn't that much like you either. The, 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 ew. Sorry, I had hair in my mouth. Ew. Is Lizzie coming back? Don't know. Aww. Where'd she go? I think she's at the beach, probably. Is she playing at her park? Cove's eyes lit up at the mention of the park, and he looked towards you. Uh, There's a park? <laughs> yep, but it's old. Can you show me? I want to go. He started getting up before you had even answered, and Shiloh jumped up beside him in excitement. Really, you do too, right, Mina? The park is fun. Um, no. <laughs> no. No, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, no. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's right at the beach, so there's lots of fun things to do, and lots of sand. It has a jungle bent. Oh my gosh. How can I say... Okay, how can you get band and gym mixed up? Like, okay, I need to, like, fix on my vocab. <laughs> I need to, like, improve my vocabulary or something. It has a jungle gym and a bunch of swings. That sounds like it could be cool. So, are we going to find Lizzie? I don't know. I never really wanted to see her. I just want to check the park out. Adrift without any direction, Shiley finally turned to you. Okay. He perked up. Both boys wanted to go. It was only fair. After getting permission from your moms, the three of you were ready to head out. It was a short walk to the park. Lizzie had convinced your moms that it was so short that she could always be allowed to walk there by herself. When you found her, she was hanging on the jungle gym, swinging back and forth. Hey Lizzie. Hey Lizzie. Her face lit up when she saw you. When she saw you, her big brown eyes going wide. Mina, Shailu. Hi. He dropped to the ground and landed with a soft thud in the sand. In a split second, Shilu had abandoned you two and scrambled over to stand by her. You were used to feeling left out when it was just the three of you, but now Cove was here. It was nice to have someone who stuck with you. Who's that? It's Cove. He's new. Hi. I remember. Hi, Cove. Welcome to my park. Nobody ever comes to play here, so this is where we get together. She gestured wildly with her arms, as if to present the area to the newcomer. 
While Lizzie continued talking, you took the chance to cook up your shoes and my girl, your toast with the warm sand. Nice, huh? In this neighborhood, I'm the one who comes up with the ideas. You are. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I am. Who else could handle the job? I could, for example. Lizzie's, Lizzie is the oldest. By a lot. My mom said you're Mina's age. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Thought so. I'm still the only one in the group with double digits. Okay, are you like 15 or something? Like, I don't know, 11? I don't know. <laughs> what about other kids? Other kids? There aren't any. We're the only kids here, and Shiley was just visiting from another place. Oh, 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 oh. Did not know that. <laughs> okay, so, like, this dude here isn't, like... <laughs> he doesn't stay here? Like, what? <clears throat> Sorry. Not even tourists really bring their kids here. This is the land of agents. Be careful that the oldies don't try to steal your youth. Oh. Oh, poor Gove. And for a second, it looked like he might cry again. But something in his eyes shifted and he looked back at Lizzie. What kind of old people? Like moms and dads or grandparents? Grandparents who don't have kids, they hate kids. <laughs> Why? We haven't done anything. Yeah, they're really bad. You went along with her, wriggling your fingers, men and... Men, ace, English. Sorry, sorry. I don't know. <laughs> Did I just... Sorry, oh my god. I don't know how to say words. At Cove, he sniffed his forehead, creasing with worry. Lizzie was staring Cove down, but Cove wasn't even looking at her anymore. He didn't seem to care that she was there. He went into his own head. Shiley was the next one to speak, completely unaware of the situation. Um, I met Lizzie and Mina in school. You'll see tons of kids there once summer is over. I don't want to go to a new school. I don't want summer to end. Oh, well, sorry, Betty, school comes and goes <laughs> just like summer comes and goes Sally looked down to the dirt he hasn't had much luck striking up conversations with Cove I like summer vacation a lot too all the bloating tension in the air suddenly vanished when Lizzie laughed as Charlie's discomfort at how weird she thought Cove was I thought at something else entirely you didn't really know she left face scrunching up Welcome to Sunset Bird Cove. Take a seat, put up your feet, and get used to it. <sighs> you offered him a small smile, and then Elise looked to reassure him some. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. For the rest of the summer, Cove was always there. You saw him more often than Shiloh, and on some days when she was in a bad mood or busy, you even saw him more than Lizzie. Oh, wow. He became a staple of your everyday life, the way sauna and lunch and the beach were. Looking back on it years later, you would have realized that you'd have a tiny crush on him right away. One that had made you want to spend as much time with him as you did. Of course, that was only the start of things. And that is where I'm going to leave everything here. And that is, gonna, and that is where I'm going to leave this episode here. What a beginning of the first episode. Oh my gosh. That was so cool oh my gosh okay so in the next episode of this let's play of our life i'm gonna be doing moment one which is shopping um and then for all these moments i might actually do double or i might just do one each so yeah that is all for today's episode everyone if you enjoyed it make sure to hit that subscribe button and share it with your friends if you haven't already but lastly you're a gentleman thank you for watching have a great day everyone bye